The Army now putting together a sanit uh, sanity board to look into what happened when a U.S. soldier allegedly went on a deadly killing spree in Afghanistan. Uh, the sergeant's name is Robert Bales. He is charged with murdering 17 Afghan villagers, including nine children. Happened in the middle of the night about a month ago. Yalda Hakim of Australia's SBS network was the first Western journalist to visit the villages and speak to the survivors who described in detail what happened. Listen. Well, uh, my mom took as eight-year-old Nuri Banak watched her parents desperately trying to fend off the intruder, he turned his gun on her and shot her in the leg. Yalda Hakim joins us this morning. She's in Sydney, Australia. Nice to talk to you. Thanks for being with us. First, how difficult was it for you to negotiate to get into the villages and, and then even sort of have the opportunity to ask questions of the villagers? Well, I was initially denied access, Soldad, by both the US military as well as the Afghan army. As you can imagine, this was an extremely dangerous area to travel into. And after the attack, uh, the Taliban were starting to use the area as a battlefield and they had laid out booby traps, IEDs and mines in and around the village and the crime scene. Uh, so it was extremely difficult to then convince uh, the Afghan army to allow me to go in. Uh, it wasn't until we personally requested from Hamid Karzai, the president of Afghanistan, to intervene, that the path was cleared. And at that point, we were given military access and support by the Afghan uh, National Police, who escorted us into the village. Uh, of course, because I speak the local languages, I was able to gain the trust of the local uh, people, the witnesses, who opened up and gave me very heartful uh, accounts of what so happened on that horrific night. And those accounts are, are truly heartbreaking. So I want to play a a couple of different pieces and I'm going to have you talk to me uh, about them. The first is from one child that you uh, interviewed, uh, Siddi Siddiquia, I think is the name. Uh, I'll play what he said to you and then I'll, I'll ask you on the other side uh, about this child. Go ahead, play that. Oh, it's heartbreaking. He says, when my father came out, he, meaning the soldier he's talking about, shot my father. Then he entered our room. We ran from room to the other room, and he came out, and he shot us in that room, is, is what he's saying there. What was it like to interview that child who, who literally has almost no emotion on his face when he's talking to you? Absolutely. I mean, there were some disparities between the stories. The little girl that I spoke to told me that she saw numerous Americans in her home. And that young boy told me that uh, there was one American inside his house killing his family members. As you can imagine, it was extremely difficult to listen to these traumatic stories. And of course, the trauma that these children had suffered. You know, they were sleeping in their homes and uh, someone entered their house and began killing their family members. It was an extremely difficult story to listen to. Here's another child, uh, Nor Binak is a name, and, and I'll tell everyone uh, first what this child's saying. Uh, he shot my father's dog first, then shot my father in the foot, dragged my mother by the hair. My mother's screaming. He held a gun to her. My father said, leave her alone, and he shot my father right there. Let's play a little bit of what this child has to say. <laughs> How many children, uh, uh, Yalda, did you have an opportunity to interview? And, and for the most part, would you say, were their stories consistent outside of that number of soldiers issue? Yes, it was conflicted. I mean, I spoke to four witnesses in total, three of which, uh, three of who were children. And uh, of course, it's always difficult to know uh, whether a child actually saw what they did. I spoke to one adult, her name was Amina, and she told me about how her husband was shot in the head and how she dragged him back into the house and his brains were in her hands. Mm -hmm. She told me that 15 to 20 Americans were out in her yard when she went outside to find out what had happened.
her to go back inside or she would be killed too. That's the claim that she made. And like I said, uh, there were some disparities in the story. Nuri Banak, the young girl, said there were several Americans in her house. Amina, it's not her real name. She wasn't actually allowed to speak to anyone. It's the first time that she's actually spoken to anyone. And it was only because I was able to speak the language and uh, I was a woman that I was able to get access to her. Mm. Uh, she told me there were several Americans in her yard. But of course, uh, the two young young boys I spoke to, the other two witnesses, said only one American soldier entered their house and began to shoot at them. Is this a possible that this could be a, a, a crime scene of any use? We know now that uh, American authorities have gone in and kind of swept the area. Uh, a, a fair amount of time had passed before they were able to get access. But, but one would imagine, well, even when you just sort of look at the circumstances in some of the videotape that you've shot, that, that the crime scene... It, it, has been has been damaged i mean in, in the sense of how do you gain physical evidence from it at this point Absolutely. The unfortunate thing is that uh, because of Islamic rituals, they bury their dead immediately. And when I went into the villages, uh, the scene looked quite different to the initial uh, few days uh, where images had come out of those homes and villages. Uh, the bloodstains had generally been removed and washed away. Uh, General Karimi, who was the chief investigator appointed by President Hamid Karzai, told me the whole area had been disturbed. So many people had entered those houses since the crime itself that it was difficult to know whose boot print was whose, whether there were a number of American soldiers who'd entered the area or, or if it was one. It was difficult to know because, he, as he said, the whole area had been disturbed by the time these investigators had gone in. Yalda Hakim is a video journalist and a presenter for uh, Dateline, SBS uh, television in Australia. Thank you for your reporting and thank you for, uh, for joining us this morning. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you.